talked about what CPI is, and you've been trying to work with it a little bit in class, I thought I'd give you a little more detail on how you can actually use this. The Consumer Price Index uses prices paid by consumers. There are other price indexes that you see when you go to look at different economic indicators. If you go on BOS.gov, which is the site that I've recommended before for statistics, you see the CPI, you see the PPI, or the Producer Price Index. There are lots of different ones that we could use, but since we're actually trying to get at the differences for consumers, the impact of price changes on consumers, that's why you hear about the Consumer Price Index more often. Remember that in your GDP formula, C plus I plus G plus X sub N, the C component is consumer spending. It's the biggest part of your GDP. So it is a major concern when we see changes in consumer spending. It's not the most volatile component. Volatile meaning the one that is most likely to kind of upset the apple cart here. That would be investment. But the C part is bigger. So it's one that economists do focus on. So we look at the CPI. Remember that it is not an average. That's something else that you've got to keep in mind. When economists put together the combination of goods into the market basket, and a way to think of this is, let's say that you, the consumer, go to the biggest supermarket in the world once a week, and you buy exactly the same combination of stuff. Let's say you buy 10 gallons of regular gasoline, and you buy a certain number of loaves of bread, and pairs of shoes, and electronic goods, or batteries, or whatever it is. You have this combination of stuff, and with your little shopping cart, you go, and they ring you up, and you pay. The total, every single time you pay for the stuff in that shopping cart, is not going to be the same. And when we start seeing those prices increase, it's a wide enough variety of products that that tells us that there's something going on with the economy as a whole. Now, why is it an index and not an average? If it was an average, we'd be taking one of every item. But that's not what most people buy. Most people don't buy, for example, one gallon of gas every week. So some goods count more than others. That's why we say it's a weighted index or a weighted average. It's not just an average calculation. So please don't make that mistake. Um, that's something that you are likely to see in multiple choice questions, just to see, are you awake? Is your brain turned on? And are you paying attention? All right. So a market basket is simply a combination of goods and services. Now, the way that we figure out what CPI is, is that you take the total for all of that stuff in nominal prices, meaning like today. Nominal is a snapshot. At any given time, you're looking at what's happening right now. That is a nominal situation versus what happened in a base year. The base year is the benchmark that we use to judge whether or not we have inflation. Does the base year change over time? Of course it does. It has to. For the base year, we want something when the economy was pretty stable. For example, we're not going to use 2001 because 2001, not a great year for the economy. This year, not a great year for the economy. You want something when you can actually gauge what prices reasonably should do in the absence of inflation. You don't want the economy you know, going all over the place with lots of wacky stuff happening, because that's not going to work. All right, so if you have the base year, if you are adding all the prices for the base year, the base year is going to be an odd case, because what you're going to get is, the nominal price, the same as the base year price, because that's the year that you're dealing with. So in a base year, the CPI is going to equal 1 times 100. It's going to be 100. Let's say for um, 10 years later.
you're going to have nominal divided by base year times 100. Let's say that that gives us um, a CPI of 115. The next year, the 11th year, we get a CPI of 118. And you might see a question on the exam that says, what is the rate of inflation for year 11? Do you go all the way back to the base year? No, because that's not the most reasonable calculation that's going to give you the best information. You want to look between year 10 and year 11. So you have to figure out a percent change. Percent change is not difficult to calculate. You just have to keep in mind exactly what you're doing. You're going to take the new number minus the old number divided by the old number. And that's the same formula whether you're looking at it in terms of CPI, GDP, or anything else. A percent change is a percent change. So how do we figure it for these numbers? We're going to have 118 minus 115 over 115. So it's going to be, to figure out the inflation rate, 3 over 115, and you're going to get a very small percentage. That's how you use the CPI. So for your base year, it's just 1 times 100. If you're going from the base year to the next year, that's a really easy calculation for your percent change formula right here. Otherwise, you're going to look at it from the last available total to the new total. What is the change over that one-year time span? That's the number that has the greatest relevance.